Hello and welcome to this episode 6 of the Intro to Linux. If you are new to the Intro to Linux series, make sure to check out all the rest of the videos, they'll be here in the side. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. Last time we set up a dual boot install, so when you started your computer up, you could choose either Ubuntu or Windows, whichever you preferred. Assuming you did a full install on the hard drive and you wiped out all of Windows, let's see what you can do to keep using Windows now that you've wiped it out. Now what I'm going to show you today, there are actually programs out there that allow you to run one operating system system inside of another one. This is not like Wubi like we talked about earlier. That was actually putting a file on the operating system and then rebooting into it. No, this actually runs it live while you're running the operating system. It's a very cool trade-off for people to be able to run software from one operating system inside of the other without actually having to have it locally installed. The main reason I would mention this is there are some applications in Windows that just aren't available on Linux and there's not really a suitable alternative. There are other ways to make that happen. We will talk about that in just a minute, but an easy way to do it is to do it inside of a program called VirtualBox or VMware. As you'll see here, I've got two programs installed that I'm show you. first one is called VirtualBox. It's actually owned by Sun now. Uh, you see you open it up, it's just a little interface that has a bunch of buttons. They don't mean a lot to a lot of people, but the most important one for you will be new. If you have not done this before, this is going to create a file on your hard drive to contain the contents of the virtual machine. So what we'll do is click new here. You see it's a virtual machine wizard. It's going to walk us through everything we need to do to make it work. Hit next, give it the name, let's say we'll just call it Windows. You know, it's picked out, it's going to be Microsoft Windows, Windows XP, that's just the last one I used. It has all the way up through Windows 7 64-bit, that's very nice to have. Just to mention, I'm actually running the VirtualBox 3.1 point something. I'm not using the open source edition. There's very few differences, but they are kind of key. I'll put links down in the bottom bar as to how you can get these things, but let's continue. But when I look at this, you see you've got the, the amount of memory you can select is up to 2560 on this case. Uh, I'm assuming that has something to do with the limitation of VirtualBox, but I'm going to go ahead and give it one gigabyte. There you go, 1024, it actually snapped to that. So I'll hit next. Uh, boot hard disk, this is actually the virtual disk that it's going to have. Uh, you will want to have at least 10 gigabytes if you're putting Windows on it, so you'll have some room to do things. Uh, I'm going to tell it to create a new one because the one I've got has already got stuff on it. So this is just going to create a file on your hard drive. Uh, you see this is a virtual disk creation wizard, another wizard making life easy for you. Uh, what type of hard disk do you want, dynamically expanding or fixed size? It initially takes a very small space and then grows as you need it. Fixed size, it goes ahead and allocates all that space for you. I prefer the dynamically expanding because that way you don't waste a whole bunch of space. Call it whatever you want to call it and give it as much space or as little as you want. Uh, it can take up to 2 terabytes but my hard drive's not that big. I'll hit next. 10 gigs, that's fine for me finish and very quickly it's already done. If you had told it to do the fix size it would take either a, a few seconds and up to minutes and a half hour and depends on the, the speed of your machine. So go ahead and hit finish. One thing I will say ahead of time, I'm running a very fast machine at this point. If you don't have much memory and you don't have a very fast processor this might be a little more difficult but I have run virtual machines on very slow machines and still had some very decent performance out of them. So now that I've created this Windows machine uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit start on it. And it says, first run wizard. So I'll hit next on that. Another wizard, very nice. CD-ROM or floppy device. Who has a floppy drive anymore? I'm sure there are people out there that have them. There are people that have some old games or whatever. I don't have any use for that. You can also, you can choose what, uh, what drive you wanted to pull from, or you can come in here and give it a CD image. Like, for example, I've got Fedora 13's beta image in here. In my case, because I've bought Dell so many times over the year, I have a Windows XP reinstall CD, I have a Windows Vista reinstall CD, and a Windows 7 reinstall DVD. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it the Windows XP disk. And I'll go ahead and hit next now. You see I've picked the DVD burner to boot from. That's just the one that I put the disk in. Make sure you select whichever drive you actually put the disk in. Hit finish and it's going to start up. And this is the traditional Windows setup. I'm not going to go ahead and go through that with you because odds are you've done a Windows install before. There are enough people that have had to reinstall Windows that it's not an issue. Uh, just accept all the defaults and go through. It's not painfully difficult to do. You will probably have to go out and find drivers. That will be the hardest part. The next program I'm going to be showing you is VMware. In this case, it's VMware Player. VMware has an excellent reputation in the virtualization industry. VMware Player is a very simple way to get into virtualization. So what we'll do is we'll open VMware Player. It can be downloaded from VMware's website. I'll put links to that in the show notes. We'll go ahead and open VMware Player and click Create a Virtual Machine. You'll see here, what do you want to install from? We'll say the installer disk in the DVD burner. Windows XP Home Edition detected. So click Next. 
Windows product key. Uh, I don't actually have that because it's a Dell disk, so I'm going to have to stop at this point. But uh, if you have one there, you can go ahead and do it that way. Otherwise, you could just say install it later and tell it what OS it's going to have. XP Home sounds fine to me. Uh, it's going to create this virtual machine disk. You can tell it how big you want it to be, let's say 10 gigabytes. You can split it if you want to into smaller files. Not really necessary, but if you want to move it from one computer to another on flash drives, it'll work easier. But I'm just going to store it as a single file. And you can customize your hardware with all these specific settings, give it more RAM, more processing power, tons and tons of options. Uh, hit save and hit finish. And there you've got a virtual machine that uh, when you click on it and hit play, you see it actually went ahead and detected the disk that I had it installed. So I didn't have to give VMware all the information. You can if you have it. It'll, it should go ahead and plug it in at the time that it needs it. But in this case, it's a Dell disk, so it actually doesn't need it. Again, I assume you know how to do a Windows install, or you can find a video on how to do it, a tutorial on how to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And while I'm at it, let me just go ahead and give you a really quick view as to how things would work in XP. You'll see this booted up very quickly. It made a whole bunch of noise because Windows loves to do that. I know I can't really fault it because Ubuntu does the same thing. As you can see, we're running a plain install of Windows. It's got nothing on it, but if I wanted to install new software, I'd just stick in the disk or I'd go to the website. Uh, I would probably go to Firefox.com first to, to get the version of Firefox. That way you're a little bit safer than, than using IE. But there you go. You've used Windows before. You know how it works. Running it inside the virtual machine, there's very little difference, except you probably will not have 3D acceleration. Uh, different. If you're using VMware versus VirtualBox, you might have it and you might not. The operating system you're using determines it. Anyway, this is definitely an option to get you some programs running if you have to have them in Linux. It gives you another way to do things so you don't lose any of your functionality. And of course, as I mentioned before, there are ways to run Windows software within Linux. It's not 100% guaranteed, it's not 100% perfect, but it does work. There's a program that comes pre-installed on a lot of new Linux distributions called Wine. But what it does, it creates a compatibility layer on top of Linux that allows Windows applications to run as if they were native. Again, it's not perfect, it does require some tweaking. Uh, there are a lot of video games that work very well under Wine. There are a lot that don't work. I know my friend, the Linux whiz kid, Parker, he's made a lot of great videos on how to run things inside of Wine, inside of Linux. Anyway, if you're curious if the application that you need to run from Windows will work inside of Wine, go to appdb.winehq.org and search for it. They've got a whole library of applications and they will tell you if they'll work, how they work, what do you have to do to make them work. It's a great site. Wine is an excellent program. There are a couple other ways to do it, but they're not free ways. There's Sedega, which is a paid program, and Play on Linux, which I believe is paid as well. But anyway, that's just a very quick intro on how to get some of your Windows software to work inside of Linux. Yes, you can do it running Windows inside of Linux. If you have to do it that way, it works. You can try to do it using Wine. That's the way I would try first. The best alternative, of course, is to watch Video 5 over again. There are a ton of alternatives to Windows software. Unless you're using something overly specialized like CAD software or GIS software, you should be able to find some sort of alternative. If the alternative just plain won't work for you, Wine may be the next best bet. And if that won't work, then you can run it inside of a virtual machine like VirtualBox or VMware. Anyway, that's all for this Intro to Linux Part 6. Next week, I believe, will be the last episode of this series. It's going to be on how to remove Linux and put Windows back on if you absolutely have to do it. I normally wouldn't advocate it, but there are going to be some people out there that try it, that do the full install and don't like it and want to go back. And I, I have to be prepared for that. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on Wednesday.